Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're talking all about skincare oils and how to pick the best oil for your skin type. So the first thing we need to talk about are fatty acids. Now, fatty acids exist in the skin barrier along with ceramides and cholesterol. And fatty acids are really important because they decrease transepidermal water loss and they're antimicrobial and they're anti-inflammatory. So there are two core fatty acids that you need to know about in order to make the best decision to determine what type of oil you should use on your skin. There's linoleic acid and there's also oleic acid. Now linoleic acid is an omega-6 fatty acid. Linoleic acid is really important for skin barrier function and actually there have been a lot of studies done that show that the skin barrier can become strengthened with increased linoleic acid content in the skin. What's interesting here is that people that have oily skin, your sebum is actually lacking in linoleic acid and it's actually higher in oleic acid. So actually acne is partially caused by a lack of linoleic acid in the skin. Oils that are high in linoleic acid are generally texturally quite lightweight and also less greasy feeling. So that can actually explain why people who have oily skin, your sebum tends to feel very greasy and very heavy. Whereas people who have dry skin, their sebum is generally a lot more lightweight and doesn't have that greasy, thick, goopy feeling to it. So if you have oily skin, my recommendation to you is to use oils that are high in linoleic acid, just like these. So we have safflower oil, hemp seed oil, evening primrose oil, pumpkin seed oil, rosehip seed oil, grape seed oil, and maracuja oil. I think oils that are higher in linoleic acid, like a lot of these, are more universal for all skin types because it's not going to irritate your skin and cause acne or cause any sort of congestion in the skin, like maybe oils that are higher in oleic acid might. So from this list, I can personally tell you that the Ordinary's Rosehip Seed Oil is a beautiful formulation. I love, love, love Rosehip Seed Oil so much. It really helps to make the skin softer. Hemp Seed Oil, I have also found a lot of good luck with. I've also found a lot of good luck with Maracuja Oil. I used to use Maracuja Oil from Tarte a long, long time ago, but I remember loving that oil to death and I actually kind of want to revisit it because it was so good. So like I said, if you have oily skin, I definitely recommend you check these types of oils out and also look for these oils in your skincare products. You don't have to apply straight oil to your face if that makes you really uncomfortable, but actually the introduction of linoleic acid in your oils can actually help curb acne. And so if you feel like applying oil to your skin is going to make your acne worse, it really just depends on which oil it is. When you have oily skin, your sebum contains a lot more of something called oleic acid. Now, oleic acid is an omega-9 fatty acid, and it can have somewhat of a calming effect on the skin. One thing I want to talk about really quickly is that there's this notion that oleic acid will disrupt the skin barrier if you apply too much of it. And that can be true, but only if you're applying something with like 100% oleic acid in it to your skin, that will be disruptive to your skin barrier. But a little bit of oleic acid here and there in your skincare is absolutely not a problem. I think a lot of times we like to think of skincare ingredients in terms of black and white, good and bad, but in reality, it really matters what the formulation of the overall product in skincare. We really try to demonize ingredients and categorize them as bad and you can never use them, like oleic acid or oils that are high in oleic acid. But in reality, you know, applying straight oleic acid to your face may disrupt your skin barrier, but there's no research that supports the notion that applying something that has a more balanced or like a higher content of oleic acid will disrupt your skin barrier. But like like I said earlier, people that have dry skin, their sebum is lacking in oleic acid, whereas people that have oily skin, their sebum has a lot of oleic acid in it, hence the really thick, greasy feeling that they can get on their skin. So as a result, oleic acid generally is more greasy feeling, it's a lot thicker, it's a lot more emollient, it's a lot richer, and so as a result, dry skin can actually benefit from oleic acid in your skin. People with dry skin have dry skin because they lack oil content in their skin. It has nothing to do with hydration. That would be dehydrated skin. However, dry skin specifically means lacking of oil content. Your skin can be dry and dehydrated at the same time, but dry skin specifically refers to oil content. So actually dry skin types can benefit from a richer oil to add oil back into their skin. So if you do have dry skin like me, you can absolutely use the oils that I mentioned earlier that are higher in linoleic acid, but if you have truly dry skin, I do think it's worth checking out the following oils like avocado oil, apricot kernel oil, hazelnut oil, macadamia oil, sea buckthorn oil, olive oil, sweet almond oil, argan oil, and tamanu oil. 
All of these oils are going to have a very heavy sort of feeling to them, but it's probably going to feel really, really good on your dry skin. The OG classic Josie Marin Argan Oil is really, really good. I did use it for a while there and I really did enjoy it, but I will say it is quite a thick oil. And so if you have oily skin, I don't recommend it, but if you have dry skin, I think you'll really like that one. And then also, it doesn't have to be a straight oil that you apply to your face. It can also be a skincare product that contains oils in it. So for example, the Great Barrier Relief from Crave Beauty has tomato oil in it. So if you have dry skin, I think tomato oil in the Great Barrier Relief will really, really help. But like I mentioned earlier, um, fatty acids are really critical for preventing trans epidermal water loss. And so if you have dry skin, not only is your skin lacking oil content, but it's also probably lacking in water content as well. It's probably dehydrated because there's no oil to seal things in. Personally, my favorite way to apply oils is as the last step in my skincare routine. I find just theoretically from a very hypothetical standpoint, this is not based on research at all because I actually did a video all about the order of your skincare and how you should apply your skincare products and layer them. And spoiler alert, it really doesn't matter how you layer them. So personally, I like to apply the thinnest, wateriest products closest to my skin. And then I go thicker and thicker and thicker. And then I finally go in with an oil on top. If you want like a demonstration video of how I apply oils to my skin, then give this video a thumbs up and comment down below that you want to see that because I do think that oils can be a real game changer for your skincare routine. If you're interested, in any of the skincare products that I talked about in this video. They will be linked down below for you to go check out. But I hope you found this video really helpful because oils are truly not one size fits all. What works for me may not work for you. What works for your friend may not work for you as well. So it's really up to you to do your research and really understand how these oils work on a molecular level. So hopefully this video helped with that a little bit. But yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and spending this time with me. Have a beautiful week and I will see you in my next video. Bye.